So we happen to be here working on our little mini PC. Uh, it wouldn't turn on. So the little one found out that, oops, we unplugged that by accident. The little one found out that there is, you know, the CMOS battery, which is a little watch battery, but it's inside this and these were like spot welded on so I peeled them off and I was gonna solder a new battery on but you know it's not good to solder lithium batteries so my little buddy here my little buddy here can you your handshake my little buddy here came up with an idea she said hey we got that 3d printer why don't we 3D print a battery holder? So that is what we're doing right now. We are gonna 3D print this battery holder. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna like better. This one might hold the wires better, but it might be too thick. So I got a thinner one here. And we're printing them right now and then we're gonna put them back in our little mini PC, right? And by the way, the PC we're using here is an Apple. And I don't know, we kind of wanted more storage because we bought the cheapest one. And the power button's hard to get to, so I don't know, where are you gonna put it? How about about 3D printing a little holder right here. And we can get to the power button with that little lever. So how about that? Well, someone took my chair. All right, you know what that means. Let's go uh, check on our 3D print. Okay, so here's the finished product. Basically just put the wires through, shove the battery in, and I it's tiny. So, I mean, it's tiny, tiny, but I probed it and I have my three volts. You'll just have to trust me on that. Now, of course it's going inside, you know, all this stuff. So we uh, want to put, want to put some heat shrink on it or something to insulate it. And also it'll make it a little chubbier to, wedge back above the area it was in. So since it goes in above the USB connectors and then it plugs in there. Okay, there it is in place and uh, that's a hard drive there. Okay, I did not try this prior. Let's see what happens. It's working! <laughs> All right. Yeah, before I pushed the button, it wouldn't turn on. Uh, and uh, yeah, it turns out the CMOS battery went dead. But now it's working. All right. Um, this particular thing. It just has a power cable connected to it, a network. There's no video or nothing. Uh, yeah, that spooked me. The light went out. Yeah, that's all it needs because everything uh, runs completely remotely. Let's go play with it. All right, now let's see if our mini is working. We're in the home lab. Here's where the mini is. We're going to click on that. This is because it's not a secured signed certificate on here. So we're just going to go for it. And we're going to log in. I have a way to get rid of that subscription notice. So here we are. This, <clears throat> this is the mini running right now. 
we have one virtual machine running, we have five of them stopped, and we have one template. And we have some LCX containers. I'm running some Docker stuff. So now we got one Docker running here. You can see what it's using. They, they don't use much. This is a new Ubuntu uh, Linux computer that uh, runs a Docker for me. Another Ubuntu Linux. That's just a full computer. Here is a Windows computer, and here's another Windows computer. As you can see, this one's running. Here it shows like how much it's using. Looks like it's using quite a bit of memory there, doesn't it? Of what I gave it. 16 gigs of RAM, pretty good. But anyway, here, let's see what's going on. Okay, there's our computer. See it in there? Now I can, looks like it wants to restart for some updates. Now I can run this remotely in a full screen. I can run it in the browser like this. Um, you know, however, however I choose to run it. So we'll, maybe we'll restart, let it do an update. Meanwhile, we'll go over here. This is an Apple computer. I can run it or whatever, assign different hardware. This is an XCPNG server. Uh, that I don't really use anymore. I was going between Proxmox and XPNG. So anyway, and they're all backed up here. Here's all the backups. In case something goes wrong, I can just restore them in minutes. This is on a backup server. And uh, this is just the storage I'm using. Those are, all those are backups right there. Sorry, that's the backup PC. These are all the backups. Here they are. You can uh, save different forms of versions of backups. That way you can restore them and actually build other computers if you want to, if you want a bunch of different computers. But anyway, it looks like it's working. There you go. Well, thanks for watching. That's what's going on in the computer. It's only using a little over 50% of the total RAM. Now, keep in mind, it's just a teeny little PC, and you're running Windows and a few other things. So, all right, thanks for watching.